everybody. Welcome back to Sticks and Stones. I <clears throat> uh, got a piece of cut off cotton wood here. We're going to power carve this today and make something out of it. Not sure what yet, but we'll figure something out. I know a lot of you guys are missing the power carving videos. I am working on the Christmas video. It's almost done. That will be on this week in between putting other videos on. Yeah, I know it's taken me a while, but I said before January's over, so I still got time. <laughs> I'd rather be carving <clears throat> myself, but anyway, I've got a box in the mail today from Jordy over there at Carving Fusion. He sent me some nice western red cedar and a couple of pieces of cottonwood. This isn't one of them, by the way. This is just a piece I found in one of my boxes uh, under my bench. And it's not too big. It's only, you know, probably about six inches uh, long, and but it is four probably four and a half wide something like that and it's got enough thickness looks like it had a couple of screw holes in it too something or, but uh it's got enough thickness that we can make something out of it so we're gonna power carve this today and see if we can get a nice little character or wood spirit or something on them all right uh i'm gonna be using my dremel 4000 and to rough this out i will be using a saber tooth green rough bit okay this right here is one of the coarse bits i happen to like saber tooth uh kind of like it cuts all extreme it's, again it's a flame shape comes to a little bit more of a point a little more control for me like i said i like the typhoons and, and the saber tooths myself i do enjoy cuts all too all right so i use whatever i got in my box that's close and whatever i think is going to work the best and i do happen to like the pointier bits when i'm kind of drawing into the wood it's a little bit more control for me than the fat uh cuts all extreme flame burr all right which i do use a lot but i use it for different things also all right now it's kind of rough here so we're going to start with a little bit of shaping and i'll just start drawing and uh probably have to do a voiceover on this because i'm pretty much going to draw with this and i'll explain what i'm doing as i go in that because my dust collector is loud and I'm going to make a mess, and I'll probably add some hand tools at the end and see if we can come up with a decent little wood spirit or something on this guy. Okay? Well, with that said, I do want to give a shout-out to Just Carve Rob. Make sure you go visit Rob over there. Again, like I said, Jordy over there at Carve Fusion. Good friend of mine. I want you to go over and check him out. If you're new to the channel, go check those guys out. You got Ben at Studio on the Lake. Another great carver. Go check Ben's channel out. And you have Matt Carves who's over there in New Zealand, and Matt has been putting some videos out that are real interesting and some neat stuff. So go check those guys out, and you'll learn pretty much all the aspects of wood carving if you're coming and you're new as far as Dremel carving, as far as chainsaw carving, and knife carving, which we do all three on this channel, and most of the other channels cover a lot of Dremel carving also, all right, if that's what you're into. Okay, and chainsaw carving. So here we go. Let's see what we can come up with. Okay, I'm just going to have to shake this and round it over. Uh, like I said, I did get a piece that was laying around uh, under my box. Uh, I believe this right here is Montana bark. It's a little bit thicker and a little bit tighter grain. So it should carve up pretty good. I'm going to start off by... Carving in kind of uh, three different angles here to start the forehead, and then I'll put the brow line underneath it here. This right here is where we're going to start setting our eyes in and stuff. All right, down here we'll start shaping a quick little nose. And I'm going to go pretty light here. I'm not going to dig him in yet because I'm not really sure exactly how I want to make him yet. So I'm just kind of feeling the carving out a little bit. And as I go, I'll get more and more depth. Uh, the way to create depth here when you're doing such a shallow type carving, all right, I'm not really digging a lot, is just start really digging in by the corners of the nose, and I'll, I'll try to shape my eye mounds uh, and shake them out a little bit as I go. So I'm going to form the eyebrows here and just kind of etch in a little bit as I clean it up and start shaping them down into the sides. And I'll start making sure that I have some room plenty of room to put my eyes and everything and I'll shake them down and smooth them down so by the time I have his mustache in or his lips or whatever I'm going to do I'll have uh, my eye mounds already shaped and if I got to take more wood out uh, I'm going to keep digging alongside that nose to make it pop out 
that's what we'll do. So a little at a time, I'm gonna draw with this bit. That's why I like this bit, like I said, because it is kind of pointy, so it's easier to draw for me. And when I wanna remove more wood or, uh, you know, a lot more material, I'll use the Cutsol Extreme Flame Blur, because that is a fatter bit. But this bit right here from Sabertooth is actually pointier, so it gives me a little bit more control as far as uh, drawing goes when I'm just kind of winging it like I am here. All right. Now, if you notice as I'm doing this, uh, I'm going kind of slow and not taking big, big bites off because, again, I'm shaping just a little bit as I go as I'm putting my design in. And you will notice I keep turning it to the side to look at the profile because that's important. If I can't see the eyes, you know, from the side and everything, I know I got to take it down there on the sides, especially at the corners of uh, the eyes where the eyes end and the eyebrows and everything end. I'm going to want to take some wood out right over there because then I'll be able to view the profile and see them a lot better because I'm going to have to take the temples down on the sides and at the end of the eyes. And then we'll be able to view it a lot easier from this side. You know, you'll be able to see it and it won't look so flat. Okay, just kind of shaping a little mound here for the barrel of the mouth and rounding things over smooth. This is about two and a half times the speed so you don't have to get too bored watching me just design the whole thing. And then we're gonna clean it up with uh, other Dremel bits. I'm gonna try to keep most of this Dremel bits, but I will use some hand tools to clean it up. Now that right there is not going to be his mouth. His mouth's going above that. That's kind of marking the chin on the bottom. We can even make that a bottom lip. Right here, I'm going to go a little above it and put his bottom lip in. Right? And we'll make the rest kind of like the mustache coming down on the top. And make sure to take some wood out underneath that if you want to get that kind of expression. Once you put a, a lip in your guy. Right? If you're doing a wood spirit like this or any kind of face. And a little at a time, I'll take the wood out of the sides here, like I said, over at the temples. And that'll start digging his face in a little bit more. And right here under the lip, like I said, make sure you take some wood out there so your lip stands out and it gives it some shadow. A little at a time, I'll start shaping that nose back. And by digging into the corners of the eyes, that'll bring the nose out since uh, the way I started this wasn't really at a big angle or anything. Uh, he was kind of flat. But we'll still get enough depth to pull up a decent carving and make sure that he looks so uh, deep enough. Right here, I'm trying to just shape over that lip a little bit. And that'll be the mustache. We'll do it lightly. We'll detail him up. Uh, I do like to use hand tools at the end of power carving like this and then it won't have a Dremel card look. It'll look like we actually did it all by hand. So even after the video I'm sure I'll be refining this guy with hand tools and whatever but I am going to try and do a lot of Dremel videos <clears throat> and show you how I do this. Excuse me. <clears throat> Cotton with dust in my throat. Uh, and during the Dremel videos, I'm going to try and explain some of the bits that you can use and everything because you can do all of this with Dremels, but there's nothing like adding a good sharp set of hand okay. tools. Okay. Now, I wanted to smooth those eye mounds over that I just popped in there quick. All right. So, you can do that with, this right here is a diamond ball. All right. And all I did was I took some 220 and a piece of 220 and I went around and I, I just smoothed them up real quick. All right. Went over a couple parts of the carving. Uh, 220 on cotton wood works pretty good. Just enough for smoothing things over. Make sure you brush the grit off the sandpaper. <clears throat> All right. If you're going to run your knife or hand tools through that anyway. All right. Because it will dull your tools. If you're using big heavy bits like, you know, saber tooths and, and cuts all extremes and stuff, you don't, you don't really have to worry about that <clears throat> so much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to a Dremel bit here. And I could use a cone bit, which looks like this. All right, but I really don't want to burn the carving. It'll tend to burn the carving. And I want to try... I'll show you guys how I do some eyes with the Dremel. Is I form my eye mounds like this, okay? And then we want to get some eyelids in here. All right? So 
there is an upper and a lower eyelid, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to try and use this little cylinder bit from Dremel and see if we can pop some upper eyelids across those mounds real quick. And let's see how that works. I won't put my dust coll collector on for this. Using the edge of that bit. Okay. Come straight across. Just like that. Now across the top. Very lightly. And then we can use our sandpaper or whatever to, uh, you know, get that marker off there. Don't worry about it. Let's do the other one. Right, so that's all I'm doing there. Let me go a little bit on top. Okay. And that's how you can, that's a bit that you can use to get some quick eyelids in there. All right. And we're going to try and do all of this with the Dremel because I promise you a Dremel carving. All right. And Dremel bits. But you might have to use your knife here and there. All right, uh, if you want the best results, I think, anyway. Now, what we're going to do is not worry about what's sticking out here for now. All right. Come up to the corner of that eyelid and draw yourself another line. Just like that. Corner of the eyelid. And up and under that other one. And we're going to try and cut that line in using the same bit, okay? Here we go. Turn it upside down for this. And that right there is gonna be Cut in real good. All right, let's do this one. All right, now we have some nice little almond shapes that we can round off and we can make our eyeballs out of. All right, now this is where you want to decide how big you want your eyes and everything. And I'll tell you right now, if you're doing a wood spirit, most of you are probably making the eyes too big. All right. So if we want him to look decent, let me just drop up my knife here. Since we cut that little groove in, I'm going to try. Uh, maybe I should wait. I'm going to at least round these up into this one. I don't like this line up top. I'm going to try and shave that off a little bit. Because it's going to drive me nuts looking at that black. It's just really the fray. <laughs> I can see a little bit better. But anyway, the idea here is to have an upper and a lower eyelid, all right? Now, this right here is going to be the eyeball. We're going to shape the eyeball out of this. I'm sorry about that. Keep holding that away from it. Let me move that down. Now, the thing is, to get that eyeball in, we still need a lower eyelid. We shaped the mound, all right? But we're still going to need a lower eyelid. So what I want to do is round this over just a little bit so it's easier for me to get that lower eyelid in. All right? Not too much. Just enough so when I run that tool again... I can put the second line in. So I'm going to push this eyeball down into that groove that we just made. All right. And up. Into that one. Now this doesn't take too, too much work. Don't get like, oh, you said it was going to be all with the Dremel. You could do this with a pocket knife, guys. All right. I'm going very lightly. And since we cut that little trench, it's going to be easy to just push down light. All right, stop your Dremel for a minute. Pick up a knife for a second and just kind of 
round that off just a little bit. <laughs> At least if you want better eyes, anyway. Try and make sure it goes up and underneath. <laughs> Ever so slightly. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take that tool and we're going to cut in another line. All right, uh, where's my marker? Marker's a bit thick to draw this, but... We're going to try and keep these eyes fairly small. Like I said, if you're making them really big, that's what's making your wood spirits look goofy. So we're going to try and make them fairly small. All right. Now this bottom half right here, this is going to be his lower eyelid. All right. We're going to put the eyeball in here. All right. So we have to cut this line where the marker is. Again, I like to use a V-tool for this, but since we're using the Dremel, we're going to try and get that in. Now, it's a very small line. We might want a real point. I don't know if we can get that with the cylinder bit without making it too big. Maybe we should try to do with the cone. I never tried the cone on the cottonwood uh, as far as going that small, but I think we're going to, so you guys get an idea what that does. I usually pop them both in with the cylinder bit. Where's my wrench? So I'm going to quick switch to the cone bit. Since most of you, if you've been watching uh, the Dremel videos, probably have one. Or if you're a chainsaw carver and watching that stuff, you probably have a cone bit by now. If you don't, this is what it looks like. It's a Dremel bit. The part number, I'm not exactly sure, but you can check out my Amazon store. If you need to pick up a cone bit, it's in the link below. And that's what we're going to use to try and put these in. I am going to hold it upside down for this and just use the point and go right across the line we drew, okay? Okay, let's try that out. Do the other one. And that's all we need for those lower eyelids, right? You want to put it on the top, you can reinforce that top line. The comb bit will work for that, okay? Because it's got that fine point. Now, don't worry if they look uneven. <laughs> Let's brush him off a little bit. Because the whole thing here, all right, if we didn't get this in, we might have to cut it in a little bit more. We want this lower eyelid to stand out, so we have to take wood out from underneath that. All right. But the whole idea here is to get these eyeballs in. So what we're going to do now is cut a little corner. Take that chip out. Come over here, cut this corner. Take that corner chip out. And then let's round these eyes downward into that lower eyelid <laughs> now your eyes should be <laughs> angled a little bit towards the top all right it should be higher on top than on the bottom <clears throat> that's what's going to make it look a little bit better all right and of course like i said the smaller 
probably the better he's going to look. So there's a little tip that you guys can take. Dremel carving or not, make your eyes smaller. And uh, you'll probably be happier with them. Same over here. Going to make sure that I have my corner cut out. Okay. Try not to break any eyelids off. Going to round this down. Try and get it to go downward into... Am I in the camera there? Yeah. Get it to go down and into that eyelid. And don't worry, we'll uh, make the eyelid a little bit better on the bottom there. But we need something to cut into. And like I said, these should grow down more than up. All right. If you want that eye to look a little bit more realistic. And these aren't even super realistic eyes. It's just as far as looking at the carving goes, it's going to look much better. So keep the top high and round into the bottom more. And then you could just a little bit, if you want, you can push up and under to finish the rounding process but it shouldn't be that much most of it should be done going towards the bottom okay just like that you see them nice little eye mounds in there okay so that's probably one of the biggest tips i can give you as far as the dremel goes uh and doing eyes i know we've been covering eyes on the channel <laughs> but try it out make your eyes smaller Try and get your upper and lower lid, all right? For instance, if I took my V-tool here and just cleaned that lower lid up even, all right, uh, it wouldn't be hard to make that stand out so much <laughs> by taking wood out and underneath this. But to get that eye in, you really do... Let me see if I can... It really is mixing, about mixing all your tools. <laughs> to get that eye in, you need something to push that down and into, okay? And that's that that lower eyelid. I always tend to pick up the hand tools. I'm sorry, even though it's a Dremel video, I know. But, <laughs> whatever tools are going to make your carving look better, use, okay? Now, this eye's a little smaller than this one. This one still needs to be rounded a little bit. So I'm going to take my time and play with it for a minute. <sighs> and just make sure that's going into that lower eyelid. All right. And if I have to run my knife across it, all right, you don't have to pick up a V-tool. Just try not to break that lower eyelid and try to take that eyeball <sighs> down. Okay. This side right here, the reason he looks bigger is we haven't cut this corner yet. And taken our chip out here. Okay. So now once I start rounding this off, the eye will even up. We'll take our chip out. And then we can start rounding, rounding them to the point where they look even. Okay, again, trying to go down more than up and into that bottom cut. It's raining here. And if my eyelid breaks off, I'll simply clean it up with that cylinder bit or my V-tool or my knife, all right? We have the tools. Don't worry about it. Practice it. You'll get it. The deeper the cuts you make uh, on those eyelids, it'll be easier to do this type of thing. All right. You don't have to go super, super deep. But you should have a good stop cut to push this into. Okay. So you can round them off with no problem. Without breaking everything off anyway. In other words, run your knife through there, you know, before you push down. <laughs> And clean that out. Now, right here's a little high spot yet. So I'm going to try and manipulate that so I can get that out. <laughs> and round that eyeball in there. Right? And what I can't get going to the bottom, chances are I'm going to have to go towards the top to get that out and round it off. If I need a little bit more shadow, take a little bit more out of the corner here.
and you got two eyeballs. Real easy to poke a hole in there and end up with pupils, okay? And your eyes won't look bad. Okay. So that's a tip I can give you on doing some eyes with your Dremel and then just using your knife for such things. All right, I put a little more light on the subject here so I can see, and I switch back to a diamond ball, All right? There's a small diamond ball. We're gonna round these eyelids off and everything, and uh, this should work pretty good to smooth everything over and do some refining on this guy. Here we go. I'm going to take a little bit of wood out from underneath those eyelids to make them stand out, all right? Just a little bit around that eyeball a little more. Clean up any broken edges on that eyelid. And clean the marker lines off. And clean our eyeball up. Also go around the nose here, and the nostrils. And that diamond bit could clean this up pretty good, all right? We are gonna cut our harder lines in with our knife or some hand tools. Then he'll have a hand card look, not a Dremel card look. But nothing hurts. Never hurts to smooth things over where you have some rough spots. Get things to blend together a little bit. Down here around the mouth, around the lips. Here at the eyebrows. So anywhere you want to clean up on this guy, now's the time to clean it. And we shape it. Because this diamond will shape it ever so slightly. And the heavier you use it, you know, the more it will, the more wood it will clear. I don't want this edge right here, for instance, too, too hard, so I'm going to soften it. With a light touch. I'm just going to go around things, blend it over, and get it ready for some hand tools. Sometimes you want to smooth over your hairs here. All right. Let's take some of those hard edges off. This kind of varnishes the carving up and makes them look a lot nicer. Nose is a little crooked. Okay. The wood spirit. Not going for realism, going for kind of weirdism, you know. We go a little bit deeper by those corners. I like to give him a bump or two over here. 
Yeah, a couple of soft wrinkles up here. Yeah. So you can play with this, do whatever you want, clean him up, however you like. And I'd use that little diamond ball as a smoothing agent when you want to clean up your cottonwood pieces. You could use ruby carvers also. They're going to take very little wood off and act more like a smoother, but they're great for blending things together and cleaning up your piece. Okay. Now for the final thing, I would go for final detail. Uh, if we were using just the Dremel, uh, there's many, many bits to cover. Uh, you could use a little cutting bit like this, right? This is another diamond bit for putting fine hairs in, right? I'd have to change the collet to show you that. We can cover that in another, another video. But I would also go back to using cylinder bits, all right? If you want to put any kind of deep lines like you would use for, uh, like, a V-tool. But I could change the collet, I guess, and cover this little bit. Do I have a bigger one? I guess not. You also have diamond cylinders. Uh, see this bit here? How long it is. This is another diamond bit. To get in and really go around the nose. Okay. I could use something like that. And dig out even more under the eyebrows and everything. And then I'd clean it up again with a diamond bit. Alright. Or a ruby bit. Is that Ethan Shank? Let me see. Uh, show you one of the cuts that that does. Yeah, I would always, myself, I would always, I would get to this point, smooth everything over, get my hand tools, and just make him awesome, all right? But if all you have is a Dremel, that's what this video is pretty much about, except rounding him off with our knife, or maybe cutting some eyelids in a little better. You're going to have to learn how to find bits that you can use, like this one, which is a diamond bit, and, uh, and experiment and see what they do. This is good for digging and I could even go underneath, get this right here a little deeper. I could always smooth it over again. So let me show you that and I'll go around his nose a little. And if you want to get that shadow there, okay, even here. We could have used this to go around his eyeballs, right? To come under. And get those eyelids in. If I want to go around his nose and set it in more, All right? His mouth. A couple of hard shadow lines.
And you can also run it through some of your hair, okay? And make small hairs with it. Okay. This guy, we don't have much hair on at the moment. You can use the side for smoothing and I can go through the wrinkles to get harder lines. Using the edge of this bit. And that's how you can get some deeper, harder lines. All right. And uh, like I said, I'd take this then and I would use my diamond ball or whatever uh, I have to clean that up. A lot of times you don't even have to put it back into your Dremel. I mean, if it's just a small boo-boo, you could take something like your diamond ball, hold it in your hand and rub over that if it's cottonwood bark. Okay. So there's another little nugget for you. Sometimes I just take the ball. Instead of changing bits, because I just got stuff to do, <laughs> and I'm lazy. And I'll take that diamond ball, and if it's enough to just smooth something over, then I'll use it by hand. All right? Just enough. If I'm using cottonwood bark, or a piece of 220. All right? So that these right here are just all tips on Dremel carving. We roughed him out using a saber tooth. The rough bit, the green bit of the saber tooth. Did almost the whole thing with it, roughed it out. And then we're just using some other bits to uh, clean him up a little bit. And I'd still tuck that eyeball in a little bit more. And to put those irises in, <clears throat> if you're going to do it with a drum, I could do it with this, this bit that I have right here, as a matter of fact. Uh, it wouldn't take much. One of the reasons I would use hand tools to put my eyes in is because just drilling a hole looks pretty much just like that most of the time. You just drill in a hole, okay? But, like I said, you can always get a good set of veiners and V tools, and you can always use those to put your eye holes in and clean up anything that the Dremel... The Dremel's still a power tool, and it can still get away from you, and, you know, you're going to get what you get. You're going to get something that looks like power carved, or you're going to get something that looks really awesome that you have a little more control over. And you can't beat hand tools for that look. So don't be afraid to add them to your power carving, even if it's just a knife. All right. You should all have a bench knife or a detail knife, at least. All right, if you're Dremel carving, because they're invaluable. And see right here, when you do do an eyelid, you have to get that up and under the eyelid, that pupil. And if it cuts into the eyelid recut that line going across and make sure it's under the eyelid okay it shouldn't be i don't know if i can 
get that. This is why I don't do too many eyes with my Dremel. Everyone that knows me knows I like my hand tools. Okay. But it's not impossible. To do now I'd pick other tools I'm just trying to give you tips if you just want to punch two holes and have a quick set of eyes surely that's the way to go and then you can clean it up with your knife or whatever but there are a lot better ways in my book than just punching two eyes you know I would get my little ruby carvers some real fine bits like this, and I would clean those up. Okay. So don't be afraid to mess with your hand tools. Don't be afraid to experiment with all the little bits that you can find. Because sooner or later you'll find some. Sometimes I get dental bits uh, off my sister, and they work great, you know, for lots of things. And don't be afraid to definitely add a good set of hand tools. Because, like I said, there's nothing like detailing the carving up. With a really good set of hand tools after you dremel carve it and get yourself some really wild detail okay and make all those lines come to life and pop even more all right to really start getting what's uh the kind of look i think everybody's looking for in their carving I'm sure most of us don't really want a carving that looks like we carved it with the Dremel. Even though most of us use our Dremels. But when, when you start getting those sharp lines, right, you really want to add those to whatever it is you're making. And you really will uh, make your carving look a lot nicer, I think. Not that it can't be done with the Dremel. You just got to keep playing with the bits. I mean, there's millions of bits. There's thousands of bits, I should say. Hundreds at least. And uh, you just got to experiment. I mean, I'll try to show you more and more. There's plenty out there. I'll give you a couple of tips today. All right. You can get them. You can experiment with them. And the more you use them and get familiar with them, the more you'll figure out what they do and what you want to use them for or not, okay? So that's going to be this little video here. Uh, I'm not going to do much right here. I could detail this droopy old mustache up. I, I put a bottom lip here, but I wanted to make it look like he's got a lip here. If I wanted to do that, I'd take my a little bit more of my hand tools and uh, really push that lip down and back. Separate that mustache a little bit more, you know. I would work on this eye up here too. So like I said, to me the best mix is both. Rough it out with your Dremel. Get some hand tools, refine it, all right, and make them whatever you want. Because the best of both worlds is really, I think, the way to go as far as any carving. Now, if you're going to need power, use power. Especially for roughing out, getting most of your design in. And then refine it with your hand tools. And you really can't beat uh, some of the effects you'll get. For instance, putting these eye holes in with a, a, a good veiner is much better than trying to poke them with some Dremel bit. It's a lot more controlled. They'll look a lot more natural. You can pop them out with your knife. Get a lot better shadow. 
and it's just gonna make your carving pop just a little bit more okay the same thing with blending some things in and getting some uh, finer detail in don't forget to add a couple of extra shadows by making some undercuts with a sharper knife or a sharper bit right underneath your lips and stuff to get those to pop all right so i'm gonna stop this video here i'm gonna sand him up i'm gonna go pick up my daughter from work i'll come back and i'll detail him up with my hand tools and probably really like him and i don't know what i'll do with his hair or whatever but uh all right there's a quick lesson on some work with the dremel i hope you enjoyed it i'm just starting to ramble now so it's time to move on Watch for the Christmas video coming up this week, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.